This evening, I would like to share with you how a 1950s cup of tea stirred up science. So it starts back in the 1940s, when a bunch of pioneering scientists wondered if they could use magnetic fields to look inside materials. Because a material is made up of atoms, and inside each atom there's a nucleus. And the nucleus has got a property called spin, which you can imagine is the nucleus rotating on an axis. Now what's cool is if you put it near a strong magnetic field, not only does the nucleus rotate on an axis, but it also wobbles. If you hit it with a radio wave, you can make it wobble so much that it flips over. Now, the scientists realised that they could detect the wobbles and the flips of the nucleus outside the material, and they could use them to work out the structure inside the material. They called it nuclear magnetic resonance. But there was a problem. They needed to use strong magnets. But more than that, the magnetic field had to be both stable and even. Now, in the 1950s, we could make the magnets pretty strong, but we were struggling to get them even across the sample. A young scientist called Felix Bloch was pondering it in 1954 over a cup of tea. And as he sat there stirring his tea, it struck him. Could he stir the sample to even out the magnetic field? This is like when you put milk in your tea and you mix it in. But only he was talking about mixing up the atoms inside the magnetic field. Well, he tried it, and the technique was a brilliant success. Suddenly, the scientists had a really clear view of inside the material. And it was at that point that other scientists started to get interested. If you look back at the history of nuclear magnetic resonance, it's been linked to six Nobel Prizes. But interestingly, three are in physics, two is in chemistry, and one's in medicine. Using magnetic fields to see inside materials has been a technique that the scientific community has embraced as a whole. Physicists, biologists, chemists, we've all worked together to look inside materials that interest us. Over the last 50 years, we've used the technique to look inside the human body, to look at soft tissue. But we've also used magnetic fields to look inside ceramics to try to work out why they're so hard. We've used them to look inside rocks to see if we can see why there might be oil or gas nearby. And I think perhaps most excitingly of all, last year a team of scientists used magnetic fields to look inside the HIV virus to try to work out why and how it became infectious. And so I think when Felix Bloch stirred that cup of tea, he did far more than he realised. Not only did he work out that he could stir up his sample, he also contributed to an amazing magnetic technique, one that's been embraced by the scientific community and mixed up how we've worked together. And I think it's when you blend different expertise from different parties that truly brilliant science happens. And that is how a cup of tea helps stir up science. Thank you. Judges, was she your cup of tea? Yes, shaken, not stirred. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was a beautiful description, a very clear, and started off with the basics and took us through it. So I, I thought it was a, a wonderful narrative. Um, so uh, why did you want to go for this subject in particular? Um, I think nuclear spin is quite a hard thing to try to express because yes. it's quantum technique and people often shy away from it. But I think just because it's hard, it still means it's worth talking about. It's a challenge. Um, <laughs> and I like the fact, I, I used the technique 10 years ago, and I was using it to look at ceramic hips. Um, and I just love the fact that the community has just taken it and it's used in so many different applications now. And I think that's something worth, worth sharing with everyone. Yes. Just curious, you didn't, choose to use a, you didn't choose to use a prop this evening. And how might you use a prop to you explain know, this? I, I ruined a perfectly good umbrella, thinking I might use it as a prop, because I was going to spin it. Because originally I was going to talk about magic angle spinning and how you spin the sample to blow out the background. Um, but when I tried it, I thought it actually distracted from the words, so in the end I ditched it. So I used a prop in the final before this, but not the one before that. And so it would have been my broken umbrella, and I would have spun it on stage, but, uh, but I called against it. Okay. I think you had absolutely mesmerising content, and there wasn't a peep from any of this lot. And actually, that's a mark of someone who's really communicating because everyone is hanging on every word. And I think the reason that it worked so well was because it was a great piece of storytelling. So well done. Well done. Great piece of storytelling from Caroline Shenton-Taylor. <laughs> <laughs>